studied some of this last week when we were studying concerning the the, uh, the parable there of the wise and foolish virgins. And uh, we kind of got over onto this this time, so we wanted to uh, study some in the uh, in Hebrew six. And uh, we're glad to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. And hope that it can be a blessing to you that are here in the church. And also for all those that will be watching uh, from the YouTube or wherever they might be seeing us, we pray that we can be a blessing because uh, the time is short. Man. The longest is short. And uh, we know that the Lord promised us that He was coming back. He didn't say when, but we know that he is, and we know that we can look around us and see the things that are going on, and it can't be wrong. And so, as we try to teach this, this is where we need to uh, talk to those that are not saved, uh, that are not, not ready. Uh, you need to be uh, asking the Lord to stir your hearts. Amen. Uh, there's no no way that I can say you can do this or you can do that and be saved, but you can just pray to the Lord and ask His forgiveness and uh, uh, pray that it's His, His will. So Amen. This morning in in Hebrews six, and we'll be studying some a little bit there in, in five too because they both go together. But <clears throat> it says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Now he's the writer here that so many people believe this Paul uh, didn't say, he didn't say, but he says here, therefore leaving the principles. The principles are the of the doctrines are the earlier, the first parts of the of the doctrines are the ones that are for those that are first learning. And I'll, I'll read you something here up in, in chapter 5 uh, that will kind of uh, show what I'm talking about here. It says in verse uh, five, uh, chapter 5 and verse 12, For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, right. ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. So we see by this uh, word here that he's talking to these people about is the uh, recommend, uh, recommended milk. We know that that's what is for babies or for young children. Right. Uh, that's uh, they're not strong enough to take strong meat. But he says here, for everyone, in verse 13, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So you might see here what Paul is talking about here in chapter Six, where he said, leaving the principles of the doctrine, we don't uh, we don't stay with a bottle in our mouth all of our life. Amen. And I'm sure that there will be those that stands before God uh, that will uh, have, have tried that route. But the thing of it is, it's not pleasing to God for us to uh, keep that bottle in our mouth all of our life and be a babe in Christ because. We're put here to get stronger. We're put here to be a witness. We're put here to tell others about uh, saving grace that we have experienced. And uh, a baby that is on the bottle cannot tell you a whole lot about what's going on in his life. Right. And so that is our that is our job this morning is to uh, tell others about you. So he says here, the uh, let us go on to perfection. Now, again, we as uh, true believers in Christ, as missionary Baptists, as independent missionary Baptists, believe uh, that the soul can reach perfection because it does when salvation enters. Amen. When the Lord saves us, our soul becomes perfect. But 
It's a far cry for our flesh because our Amen. flesh, our flesh never reaches perfection while it's alive. It must die and it must be uh, buried and it must be resurrected in order for it to uh, be a perfected being because then and only then will God make it a perfect uh, being and then that, by that we, our soul and body both will be a perfect glorified body. And by that, here is the, the perfection is, is uh, uh, something that so many people have tried to reach in the flesh. And uh, we have known people to say that they hadn't sinned in years and years and years. Well, uh, regardless of whether they had or not, they were born in sin. And they, they have to have something besides works in order to uh, have that uh, body uh, changed. And so our soul is changed through the, the redemption of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. by His blood and by His death on the cross of Calvary, by His living here upon this earth and living a perfect life. And so this morning, this is the word perfection does not mean anything concerning the flesh. You'll never, if you are uh, wondering about why these foolish thoughts come into your mind, uh, why you see things and hang on to them that you shouldn't, listen, it's the flesh. Amen. The flesh is a sinful creature. It's You're right. It's a sinful thing. It was born of your mother. <coughs> Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again over in John. Uh, and he was talking not about the fleshly birth because uh, he, he goes on to say about uh, that we have a fleshly birth and a spiritual birth. And the spiritual birth is what he's talking about. Amen. And I hope this morning that that we as God's people will put prayers on these things that are going here and not say, well, I've heard that. I've heard that all my life. I know that. Tell me something I don't know. Well, there's somebody somewhere listening this morning that doesn't know this. Right. It's, it is. And, uh, you know, you may have heard it a, a hundred times. And listen, there might be something in this message this morning that will ring your bell and let your eyes be open to a greater <coughs> understanding of what is going on here this morning. So Paul, or the writer here, is saying, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. Now, the foundation that he's talking about here is over in the chapter, let's look, let's look just a minute, I believe it is, to a nine, chapter 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offer himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And we see, we see here by this that it's through God and it's not by works. It says, for, for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressor that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Now I want to get back again and read this again because it says here, uh, laying again the foundation of repentance. And, in, and look in 12, uh, in 12, in 12, 1, Hebrews 12, 1, we want to see a little bit more about this uh, foundation of repentance. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about a so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and sin which does, the, does so easily beset us. <clears throat> let us and uh, let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of, of God. Amen. Now this is the this is the the foundation that the writer here is talking about, the knowledge and the truth that Jesus Christ came to this earth and died for our sins. His blood covered our sins, made an atonement for our sins. And when God sees that blood, there's no more guilt there. Amen. And this is the repentance, he says, and not laying again the, the uh, foundation of repentance. And so, I believe this morning, uh, he says it's for the dead works. 
Now, first of all, uh, there's no more foundation that can be laid because of uh, people's uh, not un not being knowledgeable about uh, what is going on in their life. So many people think that they uh, fall from grace. They think that they have to go and uh, start a new uh, a new life, uh, be reborn again, be saved again, whatever you want to say, and uh, that that requires a new foundation. It does. There's no there's no more there's no more uh, place for a new foundation. If you're saved, if you're have you been saved, if you hear this, everybody that's listening, if you've been saved. You're saved with an everlasting salvation. Amen. And uh, First Peter, First Peter goes along with this in, in First Peter three one, I believe it is uh, that which is born of God does not sin. Amen. And that is His, uh, your soul. Now, while I go, I told you about the flesh. Listen, it's not saved. Uh, don't uh, don't worry about the say the flesh being saved. You have to worry about what the flesh does. But the thing of it is, listen. You've got to understand what the flesh stands for. <coughs> the flesh stands for sin. Uh, it's not been it's not been checked. It won't be checked until such times as it leaves this world, it dies, and is buried. Now, I've done so told you that, but that is the flesh for you. And so this repentance uh, from dead works and a faith toward God, the dead works. I believe a lot of dead works, and he's he's writing here just after the. The change over from from uh, law to grace, and if you think about the law, a uh, law was a work, but the law, those works, could not save nobody. Amen. They were, in other words, dead works because listen, all they did, all they could do was cause your sin or their sins to be rolled back, and God would hold all of those sins. In, in his care until such time as the uh, Son of God came to this earth and, and, and create or, or lived and, and lived a perfect life here and made a perfect atonement for those sins. And in that time frame, then after Jesus died and uh, was buried and was while he was in the grave, he went unto the place called Abraham's bosom and talked to those people, preached to those people, told them about grace, and they accepted his preaching, his, his, uh, the grace that he offered to them, and they were led, kept, they were, the, the captivity we were down, I was led out free to be with God in glory. Amen. So this morning, this, this all took place, but now when this soul dies, when this flesh dies, it goes it goes and, 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 and it rests until such time or it's in a certain place until such time as it's resurrected. And when it is resurrected, it's brought forth as a, 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 a glorified body. And the soul that we have, when it leaves this body and, 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 and they both are united, it's a glorified body. It's a glorified, complete body. Thing. And so these things are some of the things that we need to understand about this uh, the, and the faith towards God and of the doctrine of baptism and of the laying on of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. These are some of the things this morning. There is going to be a judgment and, and we know this morning that we will all stand before God that are saved in the, in the, in the first judgment or in the first resurrection. And we will be awarded the, for the the uh, days that we've done in, uh, in the body and the flesh, in the uh, our, for rewards in the body and in the soul. We'll be rewarded, but also those that uh, will be there later will be rewarded for the uh, sins that they've committed in the body. And so mm -hmm. this morning, these are some of the things that I think that would be needful for. Uh, a lot of people to understand in the year because listen uh, we have so many out there this morning that are teaching and uh, and you can hear them I mean I've turned the radio on this morning I heard them you you hear these false these false teachers telling these people how to be saved and how to stay saved and all this and, and all they do is they teach works works, works and listen people it's filling up hell 
it just assures this world. It's it's causing people to stay here upon this earth, and they can they'll trust in their works. They'll trust in just anything that comes along, and as long as they feel good about it, uh, and the devil will feel good about it. Listen, they'll live a life here on this earth, and they'll die in their sins. Right. And, and right. we need this morning to understand what the Bible really teaches and tells us. So he says, notice in verse 3, uh, and this will we do if God permits. Now notice, <clears throat> and this is and this is talking about salvation. For if for it for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. Now who is enlightened? Well, we think about light when God appeared and said, let there be light, and there was light. This was a light, not, not the light of the sun, because he created the sun later. This was the light, the spiritual light that shined in the darkness, and this darkness was a, uh, <coughs> a, a, a damning darkness, but he says, and the, and the darkness comprehended it not. Here we're seeing, he says, and who were once enlightened, and the enlightening is this morning that when a soul receives salvation, when his, when their eyes are open, and when they can, when they understand that their lost condition, and they turn to God for salvation. Amen. This, is, this is the enlightening. Now notice, who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift. What is the heavenly gift? Well, it's the gift of the Holy Spirit coming and comforting your soul uh, that God has sent, and He comforts your soul and assures you that you've been saved. And He says, and we're made partakers of the Holy Ghost. And so the Holy Ghost comes in and makes its abode with you. That's It's salvation. Here's a picture of salvation. And notice He says, He uses the word impossible. For it is impossible now notice, these people that will tell you, oh, if you get out here and you commit adultery and you steal and you rob and all this, you have sinned again and you're, you'll die and go to hell. Listen, it's a lie out of hell. Amen. It's a lie. And, and, and I don't put my approval upon any of the things that I mentioned that goes on, but here's the thing. That is not the sin that sends a soul to hell. Mm -hmm. the, the sin that sends a soul to hell is the sin of unbelief. If, if, if a soul never is never enlightened and don't believe, listen, it's a damned soul. It will die and it will, it will go to hell because it's not been enlightened. It's not hurt and it's, it's, got that, it's got that sin nature that it received from Adam and Eve. And the only way to to get that sin uh, 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 forgiven is through the blood of Jesus Christ. And through the blood of Jesus Christ and the enlightening of your, uh, in the enlightening, listen, and you see your, you see your, you see your condition, listen, that's, that's, that's what he's talking about here, but he wants us to know this this morning that there is no such thing as losing your salvation. You have your salvation. It's a one-time thing. It's a permanent thing. And listen, I want to tell you this morning, if anybody could, could do that, they would cause the precious blood of Jesus Christ to be shed for an effect. Amen. And listen, the blood of Jesus Christ was not, first of all, it wasn't spilt. Amen. It wasn't accidentally dropped. It was given by Jesus Christ himself. He allowed this thing, the, he allowed himself to be killed and his blood to flow out of his body. And listen, it was for the covering, just like it was in the Old Testament when they, when they took an animal and they killed it and they drained the blood. It's a, it's a type of the atonement. It is the only atonement. Amen. And that's why that the, the sins of those that were under the law could be forgiven. Because Jesus Christ went to where they were at in Abraham's bosom and told them about this, and they accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. And they went. They went. He led them out of this place to heaven. And so here again, he says, notice he's talking about these that are enlightened. He says, if they shall fall away, 
to renew them again unto repentance. Now, if they shall fall away. You see, you see here is the thing, and, and so many people want to run across this and grab this and say, hey, uh, there it says, if they shall fall away. But I tell you this morning what, what the Bible says about that in 1 John 3, that which is born of God. That which is born of God cannot sin. Amen. So sin is what sends us to hell. Sin is what sends our soul to hell. But if it can't sin, if it's perfect, if it's if it's perfected, if it's perfect, it cannot sin. Now you say, well, I don't, I don't understand that. Well, sometimes I don't either. But the thing of it is, it's what God's word says. Amen. And you can you can you can you can listen to that. And you can pay attention to it and you can believe it because it's true. He says, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, this, this is what it would do. If you could, if you could say, hey, all right, you come on back up here and we'll pray for you. you maybe you can be saved again. Notice what it says. Seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Right. And so if you're putting Christ to an open shame, you're doing wrong. And listen, you're trying to do something that can't be done. And you're, you're just unlearned in God's Word. And so this morning, I hope that we, we can see these see these things. He says, notice here, For the earth drinketh in the rain, cometh off upon it, and bringeth forth herbs, meet for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth, receiveth blessings from God. But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh to cursing, whose end is to be burned. He's talking about those that have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. So, for in verse 10, I, I want you to notice, For God is not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love, which ye have showed towards his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. So Paul, uh, the writer here is encouraging the church there and saying, hey, I'm not speaking to you saying that you don't do good works. But he, say, he says, God, don't forget those. Uh, but they are not to keep you saved. They are not to save you. They are not in any way ways to get to hell. Right. They are for when you do get to hell. They are there for rewards. And these good works, if you do them because you love the Lord and you want to serve Him, there will be rewards for you. You won't do these works and not get paid for them. God is just to see that you uh, will get your rewards in heaven. But uh, the thing of it is, don't let works get in the wrong place. Right. Don't get let works get do try to be doing the wrong thing because if you do, you're in trouble. Because you'll be following the wrong thing. Follow the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and after you're saved, you do these good works because you love the Lord Jesus Christ. Because He is your Father and He is the one that will watch over you. He is the one that will, will <coughs> Uh, take care of you. He's the one that watches out after you. And as Brother Ashley has spoken this morning about the mercies of God and the praises of God, I thank the Lord for that. And listen, He'll bless us. He'll watch over us. And we ought to we ought to realize that this morning by Brother Ashley's experience. Listen, we've all got the same God. We've mm -hmm. all got the same Amen. God. And He watches over those He loves. Mm -hmm. And uh, he watches, and we, we serve the one we love. So if we love the Lord Jesus Christ and serve Him, He's, he's our Master. He's the one that's going to watch over us. And uh, you can rest assured that He's always with you. So we thank you this morning for this little bit of information. We hope that it will uh, help you to uh, understand a little bit closer. And to those that are listening out in the, in the world, we pray and hope that uh, they'll listen to it, they'll take their Bible, and they can study the book of Hebrews, uh, the, the sixth chapter and the fifth chapter, and read it and study it, and maybe they can see some more in it. Thank you so much for your attention.